Yo, uh, so a couple videos back, I talked briefly about uh, this this uh, really weird crime that I was a victim of, and I didn't go into a whole lot of detail because I wanted to make a whole video about it. So this is this is the video. Um, really quickly here because it's a long story and I want to get through it. I want I want some video responses and some comments to this. Uh, if you've been the victim of a similar crime or something like this, um, I'd like to hear your story. I always find these stories really interesting and it's kind of cathartic for me to hear about other people that have been through similar things and to be able to tell this story. Um, so here we go. Uh, when I was 16 years old, I lived with my dad and uh, in like a middle class neighborhood. Not a bad neighborhood by any stretch of the word. And One night, it was in the middle of November, one night I was on the phone with my girlfriend, we're chatting it up, and we get off the phone, it's like 11 o'clock, and I went out to sit in my car to have a cigarette and listen to the radio before I went to bed. So I get in the car, and I light up a cigarette, and I pop a CD in, and I'm sitting there listening. And these two guys walk up and around the corner. And I don't think anything of it. We live, like I said, in a pretty middle-class neighborhood. So I continue to smoke and just hang out. So... I, I went to change a CD at one point, and I flipped through my CDs, and I popped a new CD in. And when I looked up, these guys had come back around the corner, and this time I could see their faces, and they were wearing ski masks, right? And they weren't too far from my car by the time that I saw them. So I started thinking, you know, I need to fucking start this car and drive away. And I had every intention of doing that. Everything in my body, every neuron in my brain was screaming for me to do that, right? But I didn't. I sat there like a deer in the headlights. And sure enough, one of the guys walked right up to my driver's side window and pointed a 9mm with an extended clip right through the window and put it right against my head and said, Break yourself, motherfucker! Yes, they were black dudes. Not that it matters, but they were black guys. So anyways, I'd watched uh, New Jack City <laughs> before, so I knew what break yourself meant, thank goodness. So I gave him my wallet, and he said, Where are the fucking keys at? So I gave him the keys, and he said, Get out of the car. So I got out of the car, and he threw the keys at me. He said, open the trunk. So I walked around to the back of the car and popped the trunk open. And he, and he said, get in the fucking trunk. Now, I should tell you, this was a 1981 Ford Tempo, right? A really shitty car. I'd bought it myself. I was 16. I'd had a summer job that previous summer and bought this car for like a couple of grand myself. And one of the things I'd spent the extra money on was a sound system for it. I had some big speakers in the back of it. Anyway, there was no way I was fitting in the trunk with all that shit in it. So I said, do you want me to take, I said, I got these speakers, do you want me to take the speakers out? And he says, he looks and sees, and he goes, no, nah, just, just get in the fucking back seat then. So I did, I got in the back seat, and he sat down right next to me and just laid that gun right upside my head. And his friend went around and got in the driver's seat, and they drove off. They got on the freeway, uh, heading out into the middle of nowhere. <laughs> And uh, he's rifling through my shit and questioning me about all kinds of stuff. At one point, he asked me, he said, where's the fucking weed? And I was like, weed? It's like, I don't have any weed. And he said, we smelled weed when we drove by the first time. And I said, dude, I got cigarettes. I said, they're in the glove compartment. You're welcome to them. I don't have any weed, though. He asked what kind of shoes I was wearing. He said, what kind of fucking shoes you got on? And they were like three-year-old fucking like nasty Pumas that I'd been wearing forever. They're shitty shoes. I, it suddenly dawned on him that somebody sitting in a 1981 Ford Tempo isn't a rich motherfucker. So he got really angry about this, and he said, Motherfucker, put your head down and don't, don't look up. If you look up, I'm going to blast you. So I, put my, I laid my head in my lap, and he laid that gun right against the base of my skull and never moved it for the rest of the ride. And they drove for about an hour and a half on the, on the freeway. Now, I'd grown up around this area my entire life, and I know that an hour and a half in that direction on the freeway leads to the middle of nowhere. There's farmland and empty fields and nothing out there. Um, so finally, at some point, they turned off the road and uh, drove around for a while and stopped. And the guy said, get out of the car. So I looked up, and sure enough, we're out in the middle of fucking nowhere. There's an empty field to my left, empty field to my right. The only light that I can see is the headlights in the car. There's nothing out there. And so I'm thinking at this point, for certain, they're going to shoot me. Like they're, they, they, brought, they, they didn't bring me out here to cut me loose. They're going to shoot me and roll me in a fucking ditch. So I had to kind of prepare myself for that. And that, that moment was probably the most traumatic thing about this. Um, having to make that decision and come to that realization that I was going to die. And this wasn't a just, I had no hope. There was no hope that they were going to let me go. I was absolutely positive that they brought me out here to kill me. And I still think to this day that they did and that for some reason the, the guy got cold feet at the last minute and didn't. But anyway, I step out of the car and I, I'm standing there 
and he walks around the car and he levels the gun at me sideways, you know, like gangster style. And I close my eyes, getting ready for it, and he goes, strip! And I said, what? And he says, strip, motherfucker. And so I'm thinking, great. Like, at this point, not, not only am I going to be shot, but I'm going to get the distinct <laughs> pleasure of being raped in the ass uh, by two black guys before I get shot in the face. Awesome. <laughs> and uh, so, but, you know, I, I, I paused for a few more seconds, and he walked right up on me and put that gun right in the middle of my forehead. And he said, motherfucker, do you want to die? And I said, no, I don't. And so I stripped. I got completely butt-fucking naked out in the middle of nowhere in the middle of November uh, down to nothing. And he said, throw your clothes in the car. So I picked up my, my bundle of clothes and threw them in the back seat. And he said, you see that field over there? I said, yeah. He said, walk. And if you look back, I'm going to blast you. So I said, all right. So I started walking out into that field, and I didn't look back. <laughs> didn't. And I heard at some point the car doors slam, and I heard the car start and drive away. Uh, but I didn't look back for a long time because I was afraid that he was still standing there. He was testing me or something. So I walked and walked and walked. And finally, at some point, I just collapsed in the middle of the field and, you know, <clears throat> broke down and started blubbering and crying. And uh, finally, I, I was forced to get myself up and around because I was freezing to death. <laughs> I started to – my hands and feet were going numb and uh, – and so I knew I had to go somewhere because I didn't want to freeze on the middle of this field. Um, so I started looking around, and uh, I, I saw way off on the horizon a little pinprick of artificial light. And so I started making my way towards that. This is through untilled field. So there was, you know, I mean, just sharp rocks. I, my feet were completely shredded by the time I got to where this light was. It took me about an hour to get to where this place was. And it was a little farmhouse out in the middle of nowhere. Now, I grew up out in the country, right? And so I know what my dad would have done if some dude had showed up at 3 in the morning, you know, some fat naked guy had showed up pounding on his door at 3 in the morning. He probably would have shot the guy and asked questions later. So I was determined not to get shot by some fucking oaky farmer, right? So I found a flower pot uh, down their driveway, and I dumped it out, and I covered my genitals with it, <laughs> plopped it over my penis and balls, right? And wrapped on their door. Now, they had one of those metal security doors, and then there was a real door inside of that. So I knocked on the door, and nobody answered for a very long time, and I kept pounding on the door. And finally, I heard a woman's voice from inside the house go, Who the fuck is that? And I said, Ma'am. I said, I've been robbed. Uh, these guys robbed me. They brought me out here. They, they take my, they've taken my car. They've taken my clothes. I said, I'm not here to hurt you or your family. I would just really appreciate it if you'd call the cops. I said, I'll sit here on your, on your porch, and I won't say anything. I won't do anything. Um, and she goes, get the fuck off my porch. I've already called the cops. And so I said, okay. And I don't blame her. Uh, <laughs> probably would have done the same. I went and sat down at the end of her driveway and waited for about an hour for the cops to show up, um, just freezing. And finally the cops showed up. And make a long story short, they started to – they eventually believed my story and <laughs> believed that I wasn't a strung-out addict that had wandered off um, and sent an APB out on my car. About halfway back to town – uh, they got a call over the over the uh, you know the police wire that whatever they fucking call it the CB uh, that they had caught these fucking guys and this is how they caught them this is great they they had driven directly back to town after they dropped me off out there and were driving around downtown at two or three in the morning wearing their ski masks still they had apparently neglected to take their ski masks off and they drove by a cop two two dudes wearing ski masks at three in the morning downtown. And this cop lit them up and tried to pull them over, and they decided they were going to get in a high-speed chase or, or try, try and escape a cop in an 81 Ford Tempo 5-speed right? and failed, uh, wrecked the car, and tried to run on foot and were chewed up by a canine unit. So some sweet justice there on top of the fact that – now, one of these kids, it turns out, was only 14 years old. He was 14, uh, the kid that was driving. And the kid that had the gun on me was 17. And the 14-year-old kid got, you know, juvenile detention center until he was 16 or something. Um, and the kid that had the gun uh, is still in prison, uh, serving a 25-to-life sentence. He'd, he'd had a bunch of violent priors. And on top of that, you know, California is really strict on guns. Use a gun and you're done is a law that's on the books. Three strikes and you're out. Uh, you know, carjacking is a separate felony crime. 
carjacking, assault with a deadly weapon, grand theft auto, um, all this. Just er, this kid's rap sheet. The, just the rap. The, just the shit that he was uh, that he went up on was as long as as one of my arms. They they nailed him to the wall, <laughs> and he's still in jail to this day. Um, so anyway, that's my story. Uh, <laughs> fucked up as it is. So I'm interested to hear if anybody else has has stories like this. Um, you know, it's cathartic for me to hear other people that have gone through shit like this. So leave me a text comment. Uh, make me a video. Um, anyway, uh, that's my story. Until next time, uh, peace out, motherfuckers. And break y'all selves. <laughs>